This is our country, India. There is a continuous chain of mountain ranges in the northern part of the country. These mountains are known as the Himalayan range. The Himalayan range is bordered by the Karakoram and Hindukush ranges in the northwest. The Himalayan range is bordered by the Tibetan plateau in the north and the Indo-Gangetic plain in the south. Himalaya is a Sanskrit word. Hima means snow and Alaya means abode. Together, Himalay means the abode of snow. The Himalayas consist of three parallel ranges. The Greater Himalayas or the Himadri range, the Middle Himalayas or the Himachal range, and the Lesser Himalayas or the Shivalik range. The world's highest peak, Mount Everest, is situated in the Greater Himalayas. Some of the other high peaks in this range are Kanchanjunga, Nanga Parbat, and Nanda Devi. The Greater Himalayan range has many mountain passes. A route through a mountain is called a mountain pass. Some important passes in the Himalayan range are Zojila, Jelepla, Shipkila, and Nathula. The Greater Himalayas are covered with snow throughout the year. Many glaciers are present in this range of the Himalayas. Glaciers are large masses of moving ice. Many Himalayan rivers are formed by the melting of glaciers. Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra and Yamuna are some rivers which originate from the Himalayas. Hi everyone, here is David Jesus Vignale and I'm a comic book author. London today is like the Himalayas, full of snow covering in snow and it's completely white. And this is a great opportunity for me to tell you about the release of my first graphic novel, A Girl in the Himalayas. A Girl in the Himalayas is the story of a small girl called Vijaya that gets lost in the Himalayas. Then she's saved by an immortal warrior called Prasad. Prasad takes her to a place called the Sanctuary. It's a magical place in the Himalayas. This place is full of spirits of nature and elementals. But these elementals, they don't really welcome the presence of human beings. And they are really afraid of the presence of this small girl, Vijaya. So Vijaya has to prove she can stay with them. She has to prove she's worth. Dear children, good morning and welcome to yet another informative video of English literature. Well, let me tell you that I started this lesson with an important bit about Himalayas. I'm sure you have heard about Himalayas and who doesn't know about Himalayas? The stretch is humongous. Well, in a way, Himalayas regulate the climatic conditions in our country and it also offers to be a shield so like a protection okay so that enemies cannot invade from across the territory talking about the stretch well it begins somewhere in Pakistan travels all the way to India covers Nepal and ends in a place where you have the Brahmaputra River that's called the Brahmaputra East well we are discussing geography however the reason we are discussing geography is because Himalayas it's not only very long and vast well it's very mystic as well a lot of stories of expeditions of various adventure seekers about the Himalayas and this range offers a lot of recipe for curiosity and exploration. So you have seen and you have heard about Himalayas and you also got to meet David Jesus Vignoli. Well, David Jesus was born in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil and since then 
he's been an uh, graphic designer he's been a graphic designer he's been an illustrator he plays with pictures he reads minds and he joins both recently he wrote a book which attracted the media and which attracted the young minds the name of the book is the name of your lesson yes he is the author of the book a girl in the himalayas david jesus vignoli was mesmerized to see the offerings of this vast mountain range before i get started with the lesson you have already been offered with a small summary by david himself however before i get started i wish to know how many of you have read this book well this is illusion you see is illusion reflection it's optical illusion the moment i showcase something in the camera of the mobile phone well it's the opposite it's the opposite that's been reflected the name of this book is the monk who sold his ferrari now to own a ferrari you need to be a billionaire what does a monk has to do with ferrari well this book is a best seller it's been written by one of our authors from india robin sharma as you can see and uh, robin sharma is the ceo of sharma leadership international which is headquartered in delhi this book this book talks about a very successful businessman who had all the materialistic delights and comforts under the roof however he gave up on all of those he gave up on all of those because he realized when he fell when he fell ill he was actually a lawyer well he was a billionaire but he was actually a lawyer he was one of those lawyers that who in case stood in the courtroom the opponent would never be able to win a case that was his grip and solidarity on his subject however on one fine occasion this lawyer in this book the monk who sold his ferrari collapsed in the courtroom because of a heart attack and since then he realized that life was not what he was living life was far beyond for the pursuit of happiness you cannot be a billionaire happiness lies in sacrifices when he realized that he set out for himalayas and when he reached himalayas he saw that the mountain was much beyond than what he had learnt in school in geography in his expedition on his way on his way um, to the top of the mountain he came across he came across a monk those monks are very different they are called zen monks z e n what's so typical about these monks well you would be able to see them only if you are very fortunate there is a very mystical place in the himalayas and only very fortunate people can reach there it's called the magic sanctuary it's a place which is far from the sufferings of the world it's a place which is full of wisdom and enlightenment and zen monks are the ones who stay there the monk whom this man met whom this lawyer met was of the age of 200 years but he looked like a 16 year old boy can you imagine that's how pure he was through yoga and spiritual practices you can control your age so just imagine a 200 year old man looked like a 16 year old boy mesmerizing isn't it similarly similarly there was one girl called vijaya now i'm coming to the story your lesson girl in the himalayas there was a girl who was lost in this mystic terrain and she was left to die because you would not get an ambulance to pick up someone who's lying on the road in himalayas when she was about to breathe her last a very 
mystic man came and rescued her and took her to this place called the magic sanctuary which is there somewhere in the himalayas but i would not be able to give you the address and neither could google maps be able to help you with now when vijaya landed up in this place she saw that the trees didn't have fruits but they had souls spirits not bad spirits not women good spirits that place that place was not illusional well in this particular lesson if you read it as a concept rather than just reading it as a lesson you would understand that this world is classified into good and bad there is nothing called good and bad as such however it's the practices of men that make it good and bad talking about the good part of the world talking about helping people okay talking about the way our paramedical and allied medical forces have gone ahead to help out the covid-19 victims that makes the world a good place however when we have exploitation of women female feticide that killing that killing a baby girl in the womb when we have malpractices like this honor killings so many other things okay whenever we have any such malpractices in the society that makes the world a bad place but if you reach the magical sanctuary where you might be able to meet this zen monks then let me tell you that this place is devoid of all the sorrows and the malpractices which men have brought into this world and devastated it <clears throat> so when vijaya enters this place she sees that there are a lot of spirits there and these spirits are good spirits now this place well it's not illusional as i said there's a there, there are two words there are two words which i need to tell you with respect to this lesson you see as i said the world has been classified into good and bad similarly the world has a has a concept of illusion what's an illusion illusion is something which is not natural okay and something you know which you, you might want to have or you might want to possess or achieve however it's not real what's real is what vijaya saw in this particular magic sanctuary and children the concept that i'm talking about the positive concept that i'm talking about here with respect to the lesson is called elementals so please remember these two words read this lesson as a concept rather than just reading it as a lesson okay remember the bottom line good world bad world magic sanctuary vijaya and elementals and illusions what are elementals well elementals are the positive forces you see the spirits the spirits are representations of the positive forces which lead us to moksha enlightenment you see it's because of the elementals that we have colors in the flowers today it's because of these elementals that the birds sing in the morning when the sun rises in the east talk about anything that's positive and optimistic it's because of the elementals my dear children and this magic sanctuary is full of elementals there is no illusion there what is illusion then well illusion leads us to divis devastation when there is wisdom there is no illusion and where there is illusion there is darkness so children i have used a lot of strong words in here that is what your lesson is all about now that you have understood the bottom line and the concept i'm sure it will be easy for you to read the lesson in case if you wish to purchase this book i think it's available online in on amazon along with this book the monk who sold his ferrari by robin sharma some of your parents might be having this in the bookshelf you can always take it up and read it it's about sacrificing the materialistic pleasures which we run behind throughout our entire life but that is not going to take us anywhere it's all about sacrificing you see the dress that i am wearing today i've lost my mom i've lost my mom now it really doesn't matter my designations my educational credentials and and uh, the money well the bank balance that i have well nothing matters she is not going to come back but when she is gone right 
As her son, I realize her essence and her presence, which was so important. But now I won't have her back, right? So this is the kind of sacrifices that you need to do once you lose the people who have brought you to this world. So it's all about maintaining relationships, creating harmony, and uh, conserving and preserving the friendship that you have with people. And it's not only about human beings, it's about nature holistically which you need to conserve and preserve and respect, only then can you call yourself a human being. On that note, children, David, Jesus, Vignoli and Pratik are signing off together. I'm sure you will read this lesson as a fable, not Fabia. Fabia will definitely read it. Well, Fabia is there in your class, but I'm talking about a fable, F-A-B-L-E. Well, fable, fables are stories with moral lessons. This is one such story, children. So literature has got a lot of components and classification. Fable, fable is one of them. On that note, I'll see you in the uh, online session uh, next week. We can take up this lesson. And uh, I just wanted to clarify that while I was going through some of your unit test uh, answer sheets, I have seen, in spite of my telling you repeatedly, I have seen that children haven't uh, started the answer by copying the words of the questions from the question paper. It's like in case if I have asked you for an answer, like for example, uh, say for example, like four four stages or four processes of cooking, which was which was developed after the medieval or the Middle Ages. Well, people haven't written the question, so it's like the four stages of cooking that originated after the Middle Ages were. People haven't written that. Only the four stages. Well, marks have been deducted. So these are something which you need to keep in your mind and practice regularly. I'll leave you on that note. Thank you so much.